Hey there, welcome to Perfection Road. How did you like the new opening that we had this week? I decided since it was uh, the week before Easter that maybe we were due a little, a new look and hopefully a little new attitude without changing our message any. You know, Perfection Road is the place where uh, life's potholes are filled with God's perfection. And the week before Easter seemed like a good time to focus on some scriptures that had to do with, with resurrection. And the more that I read, the more I got to thinking about what the Apostle Paul said about those kinds of things. And I paid attention to the letters he had written. He wrote to the Ephesians and the Galatians and those Christians in Colossae and Thessalonica and... I got to thinking, I wonder what the Apostle Paul would say to the churches in America today. And that started my wheels turning just a little bit. I know that uh, in many of your yards you probably have some of these popping up about now. And uh, they're in all different stages in my yard. Uh, this one is one that looks like maybe it hadn't been up for very long. It's still perky and, and stands at attention. But I noticed that some others maybe that had been around a little longer uh, were kind of getting a little wilted and a little more droopy. And then there were some that were just about to fizzle out altogether. And sometimes I think that's the way I get. You know, some days are perky, some days are not, and some days you just downright fizzle out altogether. If we're not careful, if there's a lot of us in that fizzled out stage and we collectively make up the church, then we may send the wrong message to the world. And that's when you know, the church is, is only as strong as some of its weakest members. And the more we take care of each other and love each other, the better the whole church is going to be and the better uh, representation will be to the world. So I hope you'll just uh, bear with me for the next few minutes. And, and I've got a letter that um, we'll pretend was written by Paul to the American churches. I, I kind of tried to keep in mind Paul's uh, writing style uh, as he writes his, wrote his epistles. So uh, I'll read it and just see what you think. But please keep in mind, as I wrote this, I couldn't have written it if I wasn't thinking about my life. And this applies much more to me than I'm sure it will to you. But hopefully if we all pay attention, we'll put a better face forward for the people around us. Now let's listen to what Paul might say to us today. Paul, an apostle to Jesus Christ, to the churches of America, perhaps. You foolish Americans, how soon you have forgotten where your strength lies. You've relied far too long on your own strength and are nearly dead. It's time for resurrection. You've splintered yourself into factions that are more concerned with religious correctness than advancing the gospel. Should I remind you that there is one supreme message that has the power to unite all of you? I shared it with the Corinthians when they began to doubt the reality of resurrection. It is the matter of first importance. Jesus died for all our sins and was raised on the third day. It is this grace that fuels my passion to consider others' needs above my own. You spend your days worrying about having more than you need. You grumble and complain over the condition of government and the culture without lifting a finger to help. People who don't dress like you, live like you, and worship like you threaten your comfort. Have you forgotten all God has saved you from? Have you stopped telling your stories of deliverance? I keep getting reports that 
condemnation comes easier for you than love. Brothers and sisters, this should not be. God loved us enough to send Jesus to redeem us and show us how to love. Christ loved us enough to die for us. He then sent his spirit to lead and empower us. Christ came to save us, not to condemn us. Let's not forget the woman at the well and the one caught in adultery, the demon-possessed and the lepers, the greedy tax collectors and the prostitutes. Jesus didn't shun them. He loved them. I'll let you in on a secret that's really no secret at all. The only thing that matters is faith expressing itself in love. When love is our motivation, obedience is just what we do. There is much evil in the world, but never forget that Christ overcame the world and his representatives, as his representatives, we are called to overcome evil with good. There are some of you whom God has placed in position to change your government's laws and policies. <laughs> so change them. Others of you have been placed in families, communities, and regions to be a light. Be that light. Above all, pray every day. Since Isaiah was able to predict more than a hundred years ahead of time about a man named Cyrus, who returned captive Jews to their homeland, then rest assured, God knows the plans he has for America. It's time for the church to resurrect. You have the raising the dead, life-breathing, purpose-driven Holy Spirit living inside of you. And as my friend Peter said, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who brought you out of darkness into his wonderful light. It's time for all of you who bear the name Christian to join hands against the powers of this dark world. There will always be differences, just as there are male and female, red, black, brown, yellow, and white, rich and poor. But Jesus is Lord of us all. In him, we have been saved. We are being saved, and we will be saved on that last great day. Live like you know where you're going. Tell everyone what Jesus has done for you. Let others see your joy and peace, especially in difficult times. That's when a spirit-filled life will shine the brightest. Brothers and sisters, the world needs hope and you are the ones who must proclaim it. Put aside all your foolishness. The world is watching. Love your family. Love each other. Remember the mercy you've received. Smile because of the grace you have received. Do good because you sincerely love other people enough to show them what Jesus is like. I have high hopes for the churches of America. Return to your first love. Hold fast to what is most important. Jesus crucified and resurrected. He's coming again, you know. Won't be long now. All of us who believe the message of the cross will one day be free of every hint of evil. We are all children of the light and children of the day. Let us make every effort to share this light with those still in the dark. When the true light of the world returns, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Dear friends, let us not grow weary in proclaiming our faith in that light. Be confident that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Stand firm. Love God. Love others. May we strive for unity rather than uniformity. May the God of peace resurrect our dry hearts with the oil of surrender. As we become more and more like Christ, may we become the evidence for the grace available to anyone who believes. Grace and peace to all whose passion is Christ. Have a great day.